Our third day in northern Michigan started out kind of weird. We got just a little lost, and then it went downhill from there, before getting better again. I did miss a turn, and she's getting us back on the right. I don't think so. Oh, we ended up on this road. This is insane. After our odd Google Maps U-turn, which was really a long loop on some really bad roads, we headed north to see some more color. A great place to see the fall color is at the ski resorts. Some places will even have their chairlifts running so you can see the views from the top. Of course we stopped to take pictures whenever we saw something really cool. While I was fumbling around with my camera settings, Michelle whipped out her phone and took this picture, which ended up being way better than anything I took from here. It was cold and windy along the lakeshore. But that didn't stop us from enjoying ourselves. We were having a great time. Until... Okay, so we're on day three of our trip here up into the up northern Michigan area. And it's not been a great day so far. <laughs> we're sitting in a Walmart parking lot, having just bought four brand new tires. <laughs> You know, yesterday when we said something about, hey, you should roll with the punches. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. <laughs> um, yeah, so we were driving through, started the day out, headed north from Petoskey and seeing some really awesome countryside, fall color and everything. The roads were a little rough. A little. You no, know, they were bumpy, they were bad, but um, yeah, they, I don't know if it was really from them or the fact that we needed new tires before we left and I didn't take care of it before we left. But we got up here, the 
we were about 30 miles from here probably and, and my low tire pressure gauge came on um, the dashboard and then so I looked at the tires they didn't look terribly low so we just kept on driving very cautiously but I drove very cautiously and figured out that Sheboygan was really the closest place from where we were at to that had some sort of tire center. So we drove here and they took care of us. I mean, they weren't. It wasn't the tire. I would. I, if I would have been home, I would have bought a different tire. I didn't. They didn't have in stock what I wanted. We settled for what they had, which was very inexpensive. So we'll be buying new tires again at some point. Yeah. So, yeah, we got here and they. Oh, we had. Three, three tires that were at like 20 PSI. So so something was, and they needed to be replaced anyway. There wasn't really a whole lot of tread on them. I knew that and I should have taken care of it before we left. We were planning to do it before winter. Yeah, in the Walmart parking lot, getting ready to take off. They, they did a great job for us. They got, they fit us in. Um, Without an appointment. Jeff at the Sheboygan Walmart Auto Care Center treated us really good and got us going and, and without him we would have could have been stuck we could have been trying to find a hotel for the night while we still are paying for a hotel back in Petoskey so we're a lot less nervous now this is one of those things that can really put a lot of stress on your trip you know so we're all feeling good now um, well, we're starving. It's <laughs> almost three o'clock and we haven't had lunch and our breakfast was early so yeah. that we could get out the door early. And, you know, we're, we are on a diet, so we're not eating a ton at a time. Right. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hungry. I'm gonna go get Michelle a tree. <laughs> we're gonna have some Subway and go off our diet because otherwise it's kind of raining and we would have to try to warm up what the food we brought along with us at some sort of a picnic-y area hopefully yeah. covered because it keeps raining off and on and by the time we do that it could be 3 30 4 o'clock and so I, I said could we maybe stop it a <laughs> yeah she she gave me those we were, I was staring at her we, we had our mask on inside the inside Walmart of course and, and uh, she looked at me with those eyes you know, those sad puppy dog eyes that get me every time. Oh, well, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take advantage. <laughs> Let's go get some food. When their tummy's full and the peace of mind that we had four new tires, we headed to the Mackinac City Lighthouse. We were bound and determined to salvage the day. It's actually prettier to see the lighthouse from the front anyway. I know, but I wanted to get a shot with the, the bridge and the lighthouse together. Give me some time, give me some time to get stronger. I'll be okay, just give me a little bit longer. Yeah, we're gonna win the struggle we're in. It's never goodbye, it's never goodbye to me. We are at Mackinac Bridge. Yeah, I bet you can't hear us very well over the waves but yeah we're uh, here to see the bridge and lighthouse and yeah we're uh, having some fun and some cold weather so. <laughs> Far down the road is another lighthouse at McGulpin Point. It's probably too late, but here I am reaching my arm out. Self-guided tour. Self-guided tour. Self-guided tour. Self-guided tour. Self-guided tour. The struggle we're in. It's never goodbye. It's never goodbye till it's over.
There's a trail. Yeah. There's a bald eagle. Mackinac area and the Michigan Mackinac area is really awesome because there is a ton of history. There is the Native American history, there's the history of the missionaries, um, Pierre Marquette, and the British were actually here, and then the Americans were here. Ew. Yikes. Flush. That's gross. Lots of history to learn. Big rock. All right. See where you can find it. It said back there the eagles and raptors and lots of birds of prey are um, migrate through the Straits of Mackinac. If I... Oh, Eagle Scout project. Oh, it's a well. Even if I'm falling down, I will keep on... Yeah, that kind of scared me. <laughs> Funny. You can say For the self-guided trail, they actually have quite a few little info displays. It's kind of nice. I like self-guided, so I can move at my own pace. It's amazing how nice and still it is in here. You can hear the wind up above in the water. These photographic people out here are freaking me out because they keep thinking they're real people. This is pretty interesting, the different Native American tribes and where they were located. Got a lot of Ottawa and Chippewa here. As you can see, Ojibwe. We come to Mackinac at least once a year, and I have never been on this trail. I didn't realize that there was a trail here by this playhouse. There's usually so many people around. We don't really get to explore very much, but oh, it's getting a little bit windier again. Better put my hood back. It's uh, getting, you can feel the breeze coming up. Ooh, we can see the waves. See this. You're never gonna believe it. Uh, you gotta come see this. Why? It's amazing. Okay, cool. Come on. Okay, I gotta get some pictures here now, you know? Yes. You know, we've never, we've been to the lighthouse, I think, before. Maybe driven down there, but we've never actually walked down to the beach from there. Right. Up there's a pretty unique view of the of Mackinac Bridge. Yeah. Very pretty. What they say. Are we okay? It looks like they actually are open. They're just asking people to enter one family at a time. So that's good to know because a lot of the lighthouses are closed right now because of COVID. Only about a mile away is the Headlands International Dark Sky Park. It's a place I've wanted to go for a very long time. So 
this uh, dark sky park here is some place that it, it's a place that I've wanted to come to for a long time. Um, it's it's all about night night sky viewing and night photography. They got some pretty strict rules about lights at night here. You gotta be very careful and considerate of others, um, not to shine any light during, while they're photographing. White light. White light. Um, so this is this is recognized as as, as national. Was it a national dark sky park? Do you remember? We'll have to look at the sign. Um, but this is like one of the few places that's recognized as being very dark and great for night photography. I don't know if you've ever seen any really super awesome shots of the Milky Way and the stars or the Aurora Borealis. But this is the right place to do it right here. <laughs> yeah. So this time of October, where, when we're here, is not typically great night sky photography weather. You want calm winds and clear skies, and preferably during a new moon. Because the sky is, because there's just that much less light in the sky and you can see the stars so much better. But I need to get up here in the summertime sometime when, that, when all that's happening. Not that you can't shoot it in the winter, there are, you just won't see as much of the Milky Way, but you'll see, still see a ton of stars in the winter. And it's kind of cool because then you get, you can see the ice on the shore, and snow on the ground, different, different type of photography. So I think these trails are just so photographers can get to different areas along the shore and not be stepping on each other. Yeah, we're a little bit more protected from the wind right here, for sure. I mean, the lake is high right now, so there's a lot more like swampy areas. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Can you smell the cedar? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I was hoping. Yeah. It, this could be all just, just wind around okay. and go out. Yeah. And you know, that, that might be Wilderness State Park over there. Oh yeah. And then and the point I don't know if that would be the point over there or over there then but that's that could be Cecil Bay and then that could be around around that point that could be Sturgeon Bay okay. this, this, this is a kind of a cool thing but it's kind of it almost creeps me out sometimes is there's always this wall of shrubs and bushes and trees to get I mean it's just you can't see through there. You don't know what's on the other side of those trees at all. Could be bears. <laughs> could be, could be a cougar. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> what other? What else is dangerous? Could be just a skunk. This is one of my favorite things about this part of the state is the cedar trees yeah. smells wonderful and you just get these little pockets of, of uh, Not bad. shady no that's that's a, that's a pine tree <laughs> <laughs> I don't smell pine either so this is this is the cedar here Cedar has this kind of a bark. Yeah. 
So see if you can smell that. I don't know if it has an aroma until you cut it. No, you're not going to... The only time you're going to smell it is if you cut it. So now we're going to go to walk over to the event center. They have a, what do you call it, a living roof? Oh, this is the outdoor seating area. So definitely going to have to come back here in good weather, clear night, no wind, no moon, a couple of lawn chairs in my camera. And your that? wife. Well, the, I, I, a couple of lawn chairs sort of insinuates <laughs> that you're coming along. <laughs> I thought one for your butt, one for your feet. Oh. There you go. <laughs> okay, you can stay home if you want. <laughs> Just around the corner is Heritage Village, a quaint little historical village based in the years of 1880 to 1917. This is great. We actually have another self-guided tour here. See if this is as good as the... <gasps> that was scary. <laughs> okay, these people are trying to scare me. From 1880 to 1917. It scared me! I didn't know. <laughs> I don't know what the sign has to do with looking in the window. I just wanted to scare you. Oh. than a baldy. Actually, it's pretty close. Put your arm down just a little bit. There you go. Native American plank house. This is actually a really cool attraction because it's just open. Like some of the buildings are open and um, it's got this interpretive, you know, signs all over so you can self-guide and it's just neat because you can explore it. You don't have people, right. you know, all the workers like telling you what to do and stuff. It's really cool. Yeah, it's a completely self-guided. It's all based on donations or funded by donations. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It's a lot neater than cool. I thought it was for, and it's free. It's, yeah. Well, other than and, donations. Right. And I'm sure, I'm sure there's more people here in the summertime and stuff, but this time of year there's like nobody. Mid-October. Guest yeah. house. Quarantine facility. Yeah. yeah. That's not history. Uh, anymore. That's yeah now. <laughs> All persons are forbidden to enter or leave these premises without the permission of the health officer under penalty of law. This notice is posted in compliance with the Sanitary Code of Mackinac City and must not be removed without permission of the health officer. There's a nature center and a nature trail.
friendly Halloween skeleton in the window. It says he sold wood to steamers passing through the Straits of Mackinac. Mm. These are the original settlers of Brutus, Michigan. And so ends day three of our autumn in northern Michigan trip. Even though the day started out kind of rough, I think we more than salvaged it.